it was fun. It was a really fun movie. Uh, I found myself laughing more than uh, once. Of course, uh, the master of comedy was at the helm, so what other outcome could there be? <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm Rick. And I'm Anna. And welcome to our review of the 1935 movie Ruggles of Red Gap. Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. You're gonna have a lot of fun, we promise you. This channel is dedicated to Rick and mine bucket list of 101 goals and dreams that we hope to accomplish in our lifetime. And one of those goals for us is to watch every movie that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards from 1927 to 2028. <sighs> That is 101 years of Academy Awards Best Picture nominees and their respective winners. It's a lot of movies. And currently we are at the year 1935, which is the 8th Academy Award year. To this day we have watched 57 movies as part of this goal. And we have also discussed one movie that is not available to us because it's at UCLA mm -hmm. only. And one lost movie. Yeah, still looking for it. And the way this review goes is the way they always do. The first part will be spoiler free, which means that we'll give our top level appreciation and some thoughts about the movie without spoiling it for you. And the second part will be spoiler filled, meaning that we will deep dive into certain scenes, certain elements of the movie while spoiling the story. However, if you don't want to get spoiled, you don't need to worry. We will warn you before we get to the spoiler filled part. And at that point, you can head to the timestamp in the description box below and head directly to the end of this video where we do the ranking of ranking. all the best picture nominated movies of 1935, according to our personal preferences, obviously. Of course, yeah. <laughs> but before we get into all of that, we will start with my favorite section of every review that we do, which is the trivia section. Hit me with some info. What is this movie? Ruggles of Red Gap is a 1935 Paramount Pictures comedy film. Hmm. It came out more specifically on February 19, 1935. It was based on the 1915 best-selling novel with the same title by Henry Leon Wilson. The movie was directed by Leo McCary and it stars Charles Lachton as mm. Ruggles, whom we've seen before yes, in two of movies uh, that we reviewed on this channel. Barrett's of Wimple Street and Private Life of Henry VIII. Oh, so you remember. Very well, very well. Movie also stars Mary Bolland as Effie Flout and Charles Ruggles as Egbert Flaud. Ruggles, like the... Ruggles, like name. the name of the character. Yeah, yeah. That, is, uh, that is true. Also, Charles Ruggles, we've seen him before in also two movies that we reviewed on this channel. One Hour With You, he was Adolf. Adolf. Yes, you remembered. Mm. And The Smiling Lieutenant. The movie was nominated for one Academy Award uh, Best Picture or as it was known back then, Outstanding Production. It mm. didn't win, however, the movie had a great reception at the time when it came out. And more recently, it was deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. And it was selected for preservation um, in the National Film Registry. And some more interesting information that I have about the movie. Oh. So apparently the director, uh, Leo McCary, was so pleased with the success of the movie that he called the author of the novel to ask him if he had watched the movie, to which the author responded, yes, why did you call me? To apologize. Oh my God. <laughs> I looked into it because I wanted to know exactly what this was about and I couldn't actually find more information about this. Than just this anecdote? Yeah, uh, but I thought it, I was curious. <laughs> often authors are not very satisfied, no matter how the movie ends up. Another interesting fact about the movie. So apparently Charles Lachton personally chose Leo McCary to direct the film. Oh, so we see this again. We were it's, seeing a, a trend here of actors yeah. who have uh, all the power to choose the... So the reason why he chose Leo McCary is because um, Lachton wanted his first comedic role to be in the hands of a master of comedy. Oh. Which apparently this uh, this director is. We haven't seen any other movies by him, but... Uh... So that is it for the information that I had about the movie. So without further ado, let us move on to the spoiler-free section of this review. No spoilers. No spoilers. So, Rick, tell me please, 
What did you think about this movie without spoiling it? Yes, without spoiling it. It was fun. It was a really fun movie. Uh, I found myself laughing more than uh, once. Of course, uh, the master of comedy was at the helm. So what other uh, outcome could there be? I did feel, though, that uh, the underlying message was a bit on the nose. Uh, yeah, a little bit. But before we get more into that, because th there is something that I would like to talk about. I just wanted to mention that I found that comedy wise, this is the movie that from the movies that we've watched so far for this goal. This is the movie that made me laugh the most. Mm -hmm. I can't necessarily say that it's the best comedy because I feel like other comedic uh, movies that we've watched, like maybe are smarter or more subtle or have other characteristics. This one, it just has the best comedy. Yeah. In the, my opinion. The Tin Man was also a comedy, but it was it was more entertaining. But the, the but in other, other elements yeah. uh, into like, it too. Whereas here, I feel like the comedy was in terms the of, purpose. Yeah, I could definitely it. see that, yeah. Yeah. So, right, you were mentioning the message there that was a bit on the nose. Yeah, I mean, without spoiling... Uh, yeah, I don't know that I can say much without spoiling, <laughs> actually. Uh, um, so, but it's just my general impression. If you've seen the movie, uh, there's an underlying, you know, theme... Uh, throughout uh, that to me like sometimes felt a bit you know like pushed yeah i can i can totally see what you're talking about and we will definitely talk more about it in uh -huh. the spoiler field section i wanted to say that while watching the movie i really had this impression of a very well written satire mm. you know because again without spoiling anything it it is this movie is a depiction of high society people wanting to see more than they actually are yeah or like rather small time high society people wanting to see more than they actually are. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what it would be. But and th that's like half of the comedy, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it creates very like interesting, you know, uh, interactions between characters, dialogue too, and situations in which it's funny because the characters just make fun of themselves. Yeah. You know? It's a classic also fish out of water story. You know, ah, the yeah. first uh, third maybe is, uh, you know, the American characters uh, out of water. And then the second part is uh, Charles' character, Ruggles, who is uh, himself uh, uprooted. And, and both situations, you know, it's kind of funny to just see them interact with their surrounding and uh, environment they're not, you know, used to right yeah mm. exactly let's talk a little bit about characters performances more specifically i want to start obviously with the main character here so charles lachton performance was As so good in my opinion yeah. but here's an interesting thing this was well as i said before this was his first uh comedic role mm -hmm. and apparently not something that he did a lot even after this movie yeah we we have watched other roles of his in which he has this like uh sumptuous kind of characters mm -hmm. to interpret with very little place for for comedy but wouldn't you say that the, the private life of henry VIII was comedic not the role itself mm. i wouldn't say so yeah, but i don't feel like even here he is really that comic it's more like the situation he's put in and he plays it really oh, dry no, most I feel of the time like, i mean they do call it his first comedic role so yeah <laughs> i mean he's funny I'm just saying he's not the one telling jokes or doing funny stuff. Yes, but you know? it's a like it's important to know how to play in a comedic scene, mm -hmm. even if your character himself isn't like a buffoon kind of character, yeah. like making funny. But what I meant is stuff. in the same sense that his character and and really eight, you know, even if he's. I not feel the like one. it's it's a it's a lot less. Yeah. There. Yeah than here like it's a lot less comedic there in Harry Potter. but anyway here. we're arguing genre genres are so fluid right however uh Lafton's performance is not the only one to be noted here I feel like Ruggles did a great job in my yes, opinion yes so good that's what yeah. I that's where I was going I mean like he's one of the most comedic element of the movie like he's funny or entertaining every time he's in a scene and, you know, if you remember the two movies we've seen him before, he was kind of just there, you know? Uh, he played minor roles. Yeah, very minor movies. roles. And here, like, they let him shine. And, he, and really... he definitely did. Yeah. And I also really liked this, like, balance or, like, mirroring of Ruggles' character and um, Boland's character, he, who plays his wife. I feel like the way these two characters work together in itself is pure comedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But no, the movie overall was very funny and the like uh, performances 
uh, definitely helped performance of everyone like i thought even some of the secondary characters were really funny so one more thing the movie was filmed in one location only mm-hmm. but like in the middle of the movie there's supposed to be a big like change of scenery right yeah. what did you think of that did you f- I, I i was curious did you feel that change of, of oh, scenery? oh like compared to like when they were in europe and then they're in yeah, uh, america exactly yeah yeah i thought so too and i i was actually quite impressed to see that it was filmed in only one location like of course in a set, maybe yeah, they wouldn't yeah. go to to europe to film but i thought mm-hmm. maybe at least they would uh, use more like uh, outdoor settings from other places to get the, the European shots mm-hmm. but they didn't really it was it was all a set and I thought that they did a, a really good job at capturing yeah the, giving a feeling uh, yeah. on both sides yeah so overall what do you think would you recommend this movie yes I would it's a funny movie take your popcorn enjoy it have a good laugh it's definitely a good comedy to watch. Mm-hmm. I would also recommend it I feel like like I said you know of all these uh, movies that we've watched, so far for this goal comedy wise this is the funniest one of all by far Mm. so if that is all that we can talk about let us move on to the spoiler filled section of this review spoiler 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 we will start this section the way we usually do i will give you a short synopsis of the movie An English valet brought to the American West assimilates into the American way of life. Mm -hmm. I feel like this uh, short synopsis is really short and it kind of uh, brushes over the first half of the movie. Right, uh, about the the whole European part. Right, because Mm -hmm. really, sure, in the end it's about bringing uh, uh, Ruggles, the valet, from Europe to the US. But a lot of the movie happens in Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so. it's probably not half, but like a lot of it. Uh, yeah, the first third of it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's still a lot. So mm-hmm. before we get to talking about the scenes or the elements that we personally enjoyed, there is one scene that I want to talk about that is very important in the movie and that is apparently the most uh, memorable scene of this movie. And that is Ruggles citing the Gettysburg Address. Yes. So apparently the film editor said that Lachton was so emotional, was getting so emotional while filming that scene that it took them a day and a half to film to it. To film it. Wow. And it's a very short scene like. Mm-hmm. And they had they had to cut in between uh, different takes of the movie to get parts of it where he wasn't too like uh, emotional yeah, exactly. to get the whole speech. Exactly. And the reason why that happened is because for Lachton, that scene held great significance, personal significance, because he was at the time considering taking American citizenship. Oh. So he was personally emotionally invested <laughs> into like what the, the ideals of the American people were. Mm-hmm. And another interesting fact is because this particular scene that the movie was banned in Nazi Germany. Oh, of course. Yeah, so that is it. And I think maybe it would be interesting to start our conversation there because it's a scene that really like got me very, you know, interested as I was watching it. Mm-hmm. What, what did you think of that scene? I think it's interesting that they recited the whole thing. Yeah, I thought so too. As I was, uh, as I was watching, I was like, oh, I thought it would just be like two lines or mm-hmm. something, two sentences uh, that he will recite from the, the, the address. address. Mm-hmm. But in the end, he recites the whole, the whole thing. Like, and it's a, it's a pretty long scene. Yeah. I think it's pretty emblematic of what I was talking about earlier, which is the underlying theme or message of the movie. You know, at first glance, it's a comedy about this guy who comes to America, uh, this valet and who... A British gentleman, uh, gentleman, as they call him. (laughs) But, you know, if you dig not that deeper, (laughs) because it's pretty surface level, it's a movie about, you know, the American, uh, like you said, ideals and what they... Uh, like to represent uh, the country to be and i say that because i feel like there's definitely a dissonance or a disconnect between reality and what the people were saying you know because yeah. on one hand you talk about like oh ruggles come to america you won't be a valet anymore you'll be equal because here on the land of opportunities right everyone, everyone is, is equal, equal. Everyone except the indigenous and the black people. Right, and the, the, the black maid in yeah, the house. And exactly. the <laughs> but like, even if you get out of the movie, like the 19th century, early 19th century, like segregation is 
rampant you know like it's kind of a bit uh but you see the the reason why this scene in particular piqued my uh my interest is because i feel that it more subtly shows a, like the reality of it which is none of the american people in that bar in that wh wherever they were pub knew like one word of, of that address. address but the foreigner who comes there with a dream that, okay, this is the land of opportunity because that's what they say, knows mm -hmm. it, because to him it means something. Whereas to the people there, they just know the idea of it, like, oh, the land of opportunity, everybody's equal. Okay, that's it, but we yeah. have slaves. So mm -hmm. it's okay, you know? Like, they don't... At that, at that point in time, they didn't have yeah. slaves anymore. Well, Which brings yeah, me to but... a funny uh, scene at the beginning of the movie where he's told that he's going to go to America. It's like, oh, with the slaves? It's like, no, no. Uh, Pocahontas or something took care of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that yeah. was like, but but see, that's what I'm talking about. I feel like it's more than uh, yes, of course they're trying to show that oh look, in America, in the U.S., everyone's equal and everyone has opportunities. But at the same time, I feel like the movie does a little bit more subtly tell us that really it's just an idea. Mm. You know, this uh, British uh, valet comes here and gets into that mindset that he can be free and that he can do whatever he wants, which is kind of like why the ideal of immigrants coming there in general, right? Over time, like they go there to have opportunities. They go there to have like freedom. But when you look at the people there, they don't grasp, you know, uh, yeah. the, the idea yeah. of like their own uh, I could, country. I, I could be tempted to agree with you because of a few elements is uh, that they specifically show when he first gets into the house, uh, Ruggles house they specifically show that the maid is black and uh, one other servant is uh, Chinese, Chinese yeah. you know so, like everybody is equal but the minorities yeah you know and later in the movie they talk about how one of the Chinese people used to have this restaurant but uh, he got shot you know so like there's a like underlying message of uh, really minorities are not doing well yeah. But it's never really addressed. Uh, the point of the movie feels like it's a message on how great and how equal and how opening uh, yeah, the I US guess. is, even compared to Europe, you know, because right. when they're in Europe, uh, everybody has to know their place and they have servants. And even like Ruggles, uh, not Ruggles, the character, Ruggles, the actor. The actor, yeah. It's like, why do you have to open the door for me? You know, we're equal. You know, just to tell you, like, oh, we think differently over there in the US. We think that everyone's equal. But I feel like they treat him like that because of the way he appears, you know? He is a gentleman. He doesn't behave like a servant, right? He's, a, he's, a, he's like a butler. He's an educated man who knows how to behave in society. Mm -hmm. But that's because that was his, his role, was to attend to uh, a lord or what was yeah. his, uh, his former boss. But to these, like, to the American people, and that's where I was going in the, in the first part, what I was going with, is, like, these people who are, like, minor, uh, you know, like a, the big fish in the small pond. Mm -hmm. They're, like, the high society of their small town nowhere. Yeah. Want to behave like these, like, high European lords and whatnot, but they don't actually get it. They don't get that a valet to a lord has to be a gentleman himself, you know? They wouldn't see him on the same, uh, like, a level as their black mate in the house because he doesn't behave. So it's, it seems like to them it's all about appearance. Oh, look at you, look how you're dressed, look how you behave, look how you talk. You're the same as me. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Like, and that was one of the funniest elements is those, uh, you know, a small town American bourgeoisie trying to, like, you know, show that they're, they're also important. But my point was more so that Europe was depicted in that a specific way, you know, like you have to behave in a way that is almost, you know, quote unquote boring, you know, yeah. everybody is wearing those uh, same fancy suits. Fancy suits with the yeah. fancy ties and the mm -hmm. fancy uh, walking sticks, what are those yeah. called? I don't know. <laughs> Um, and then yeah. uh, also, you know, you have to know your place. If you're the butler, you know, you know what you, your job is, right. etc. You don't you know? sit at the ta same table with as your uh, like. Uh... Exactly, and to me, that's kind of like seeding the idea. Like, oh, over there, people are not equal, mm -hmm. uh, but come over here, uh, and you'll be like the same as us. Even though there are characters 
uh, American characters who treat uh, Ruggles uh, like crap because they see him. Oh, as including the, as the including the the wife. Yeah, exactly. But still, the overall message of the movie seems to be like that. You know that the one place in the world, even if you include Europe, the one place in the world in which people are equal would be America, which of course. Like, that's not the case. Yeah. One other element that I really want to talk about is actually in the beginning of the, um, the movie when the Lord, George, I don't remember what the rest of his name was, uh, but it was George, when he loses his valet yeah. at a game of poker. Which makes me wonder, how, can how you does even that lose? happen? Yeah, he's an employee, he's, an employee. he's not your possession. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how, how does that happen? That was weird. And I understand yeah. it's in order to create this comedic situation. Yeah. But still, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it, it kind of like uh, took off on a co- question mark uh, yeah. like note. But mm-hmm. uh, I guess, you know, in the end, uh, they don't really explain it. In the end, it just becomes funny. So yeah. it is what it is. But yeah, to me, like what we just talked about uh, lengthily, that was my main uh, issue with the movie. You know, that, uh, that underlying message. Uh, and like you said, it could be... Uh, seen as a critique of itself if you maybe pay attention to some other elements like the Americans not being aware of the Gettysburg Address or the right. minorities being treated badly so maybe the director was doing it on purpose that, know, that's kind of how it, I took it yeah. also because the movie itself feels a lot like a satire right mm-hmm. it is a satire yeah. of these like small uh, American bourgeoisie families other than that like I really enjoy just the the comedy of it like the fun yeah. parts true of the whole thing Ruggles actor not the character uh in europe was hilarious oh so (laughs) my goodness like just it's it's amazing how he can make anything funny from ordering food to like getting dressed to everything literally so good and he was also so such a sympathetic character you know because he was the one who would treat uh, ruggles the character uh like as an equal all the time and be like oh no it's okay you sit at the table get a drink with us like don't yeah. i feel like more so than uh, than anyone else he's the one who actually acted on those ideals of, those ideals of equality yeah. yeah because he was friend with everyone in yeah, town exactly. he like, was, even though even though there were other people like below him so on the social status you know yeah he was talking the same to everyone he mm. never like made a difference yeah he was even uh uh, at that one restaurant uh, the, where they give free meals and yeah. you're kind of hinted at that this is the place where the poorer people go yeah you know but he doesn't mind he goes there right and uh, he hangs out and he hangs out with everyone yeah. there so mm-hmm. another thing that i wanted to talk about is more like in um Lachten's character's arc which i thought was very interesting you know he starts from like this position where it seems like he was not unhappy. He didn't necessarily want more, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was very good at it. He was very happy with his life. And other than the fact that apparently he could be lost at poker, it didn't yeah. seem like he was there against his own volition in any way, shape or form. And he was proud um, of his profession. It was like he said, his father's and his father's father's uh, profession. And that's what he was also doing. But then... You know, at the end, and excluding the part where, yes, we're talking about the, it being in America, but then at the end, he's like in this state of mind in which he like acquires an, another kind of freedom, you know, where he can do things just for himself. Mm. So I thought that it was very interesting, just to, just for the character himself, you know. Yeah, there's definitely an evolution there that is not seen in uh, the other characters, like the wife, uh, Ruggles' wife. You know, she learns nothing by the yeah. end of the movie. Uh, Ruggles himself had nothing to learn. Yeah, he, he's, he like, he's just the same. <laughs> goes back to his old clothes right. and his old self by the end exactly. of the movie. He's like, I'm not acting like a fancy, uh, fancy I, lord. Like I'm going to dress how I like and yeah. act how I like. Exactly. Uh-huh. And I feel like in that one scene where um, he kicks out the brother-in-law of the family that he works for is like the representation of this acquired uh, freedom. freedom. Yeah, right? so like, satisfying. I don't have to attend to anyone anymore. And if I don't like you, I don't care who you are, I'll kick you I'll out, kick of, my you out of my restaurant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there anything else in particular that you would like to talk about? No, no, I think we, uh, we went around pretty much everything. Yeah, I think we touched on all the subjects that were more interesting. So without further ado, let us move on to the ranking. There's only one movie right now. 
So right now we only have uh, watched Alice Adams before this, mm -hmm. which currently stands at number one. So the question is, Ruggles of Red Gap, is it above or below Alice Adams? Mm, I would put it above. I would put it above too. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I feel like, well, they're both good movies like in their own right. This one just had more entertaining elements. It's, I feel like it's more memorable too. Yeah, oh, it made me laugh so much. Like, yeah. Uh, there was no doubt uh, in my mind. And I really like the character's um, like evolution mm -hmm. through the movie. So yeah, definitely I would put it at number one. New number one. So the ranking of 1935 Best Picture nominees as of now and according to our personal liking is at number two, Alice Adams, and at number one, Ruggles of Red Gap. Yay! That was it for our review of the movie Ruggles of Red Gap of 1935. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos of ours, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, which don't forget also, it is not just about reviewing movies, it's about our bucket list, of 101 goals and dreams that we hope to accomplish in our lifetime and we do a lot of different things on this channel like traveling learning new things self-growth and we're bringing you videos about all of them so yeah once again thank you so much for watching and have a nice day bye america the lord a country of slavery you know, that's all finished i believe some fellow called pocahontas or something did something about it i, I, mean, I